हे एवरी वन अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू माई सेल्फ नेहा गुप्ता यूर मेंट ऑफ अ करंट अफेयर्स सो लेट्स बिगिन टू डेज वीडियो विच इज गोइंग टू बी रियल इंटरेस्टिंग फॉर यू ऑल बट बिफोर दैट लेट मी इन्फॉर्म यू दैट दिस पी डी एफ इज डाउनलोडेबल एंड यू कैन डाउनलोड इट फ्रॉम द टेलीग्राम चैनल ऑफ आवर्स एंड द लिंक ऑफ द चैनल इज इन डिस्क्रिप्शन बिलो सो मूविंग अहेड द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन दैट वी हैव इज वॉट इज द जी डी पी फोरकास्ट फॉर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन As per NSO's first revised estimates of national income, consumption expenditure, saving, and capital formation for 2020 to 2021. So, guys, here the right answer is option A minus 6.6 percent. So, here the estimates are given for the financial year FY21, and FY22 is about to end. okay so do remember this thing that it is not the uh, estimates for the current year it is the estimates for the corona year you can say 2020 to 2021 that is minus 6.6% of contraction now uh, earlier if you are aware of the fact that nso itself has forecasted minus 7.3% of gdp growth rate or we can say gdp contraction for india for the same year fy21 on the basis of which many multilateral organizations have also uh, pronounced a gdp forecast of minus 7.3% for india for the uh, fy21 but right now with this revised estimate the nso which is a wing of ministry of statistics and program implementation itself has uh, uh, has revised the gdp growth rate or we can say the gdp contraction rate okay not only for the fy21 you would be amazed to know that the gdp forecast for 2019 uh, to 20 that is fy20 have also been revised okay so we will be discussing all the revised gdp forecast in detail now so uh, i have already told you this fact that 6.6% is the projected uh, gdp revised gdp contraction for fy21 now the gdp growth rate for fy20 has been revised to 3.7% so if you are aware of the fact that the gdp forecast provided by nso itself for fy20 was 4% now it has been downgraded to 3.7% okay so guys here is the table that depicts various kinds of uh, gdps uh, gdp forecast as well as uh, gross value added as well as per capita income also so these are the uh, some of the important figures or some of the important components of the report that i found really important from the exam point of view because your sebi examination is just at the door step it's on february 20 and this report is very latest okay so there are high chances that this report would draw the attention of the examiners and they may ask any question that would appear insignificant to you but that would prove itself as significant to the examiner and they can ask you a question from there okay so i have put uh, the important components that were important in my perspective in my opinion so let's discuss them in this table first is the nominal gdp that is the gdp at current prices so first i hope that you are aware of the classifications gdp first of all when it is calculated it is either at the factor cost or at the market price okay or both okay because gdp at mp is the gdp that we take for compare comparison with other countries now this gdp at mp is divided into gdp at uh gdp at current prices and gdp at constant prices okay so this current price wala gdp is the nominal gdp that is measured uh, on the basis of the current price does it also includes the impact of inflation as well now this is the gdp at constant prices wherein we definitely take into consideration the prices of the goods but we compare the production uh, with a certain constant year like in india we have 2011 to 12 as the base year for gdp calculation and this is also known as the real gdp that we calculate now what are the uh, projections for the nominal gdp and the real gdp so as you can see on the screen the nominal gdp that is the gdp at current prices is uh, forecasted at or projected at rupees 198.01 lakh crores which has declined from 
1.4% from this year okay and for 2019 to 20 it is 20.75 lakh crores which is a growth of 6.2% over FY19 so here clearly you can see that nominal GDP is showing a growth of 6.2% whereas the real GDP that we just talked about showed a growth rate of just 3.7% this clearly shows the impact of the price that is there in the nominal GDP. Real GDP that is GDP at constant prices. So 135.5 lakh crores is the production in 2020-2021. lakh crores is the production in the FY20. Now the GDP rates are here. In, uh, in FY21 it's the contraction of 6.6% and in FY20 it's the growth of 3.7%. Now gross value added at current prices again the nominal GDP so it has been declined by 1.6 percent here it's the gross value added that we are accounting here uh, and 6.9 percent is the growth rate in fy20 i hope guys you are aware of these terms and what are the technicalities of all these terms because these are the uh, static economics of yours and i hope that you have covered it from your sebi examination point of view next is the gva at constant prices so it has fallen uh, to minus 4.8 percent in the year fy21 and in fy20 it was 3.8 percent it grew by 3.8 percent net national income at current prices 1.7 sorry 171.94 lakh crores which is a contraction of 2.9 percent in comparison to FI20 and in FI20 177.17 lakh crores was the income okay net national income at current prices the per capita income guys if this is important per capita income in FI21 was 1,26,855 and in FI20 it was 1,32,115 so here you can clearly see that in FI21 there was a decline in almost all the uh, component is that we are seeing here okay per capita private financial consumption expenditure it stands at 88,775 and in FY 20 it was 91,254 okay so these are some of the figures that I think are important and can be asked in your examination apart from this uh, you also need to consider the sectoral growth okay so primary sector that is com uh, that is uh, constituted of the agriculture and allied services so allied sectors so in fi21 1.6 percent was the growth rate and in fi25 4.5 percent here among all these sectors only the primary sector is showing the pro positive trend in 2020 fi21 and we all know why is this so because the production the work in the agriculture sector did not stop even after the lockdowns if that had been stopped we would have starved to death in the year fi2021 only okay next is the secondary sector so minus 2.8 percent is the contraction that this sector faced in fi21 and the secondary sector that is the manufacturing sector it was already under pressure in fi20 only and and this corona has just acted as the last nail in the coffin and it has just reduced the secondary sec uh, sector's growth to minus 2.8 although it was earlier also minus 1.4 percent it was already under contraction the tertiary sector has faced the uh, we can say the major brunt from this pandemic because the contraction is minus 7.8 percent and the growth in fi20 was 6.3 percent now the total contraction in gva here we are talking about the gross value addition so the total contraction in 2020 to 2021 is four minus 4.8 percent and in fi20 it is 3.8 percent so guys as you can clearly see that these are just the numbers and the explanation that i could have given you the at the maximum level i have already given you that now how can you memorize these many numbers you need to revise them uh, a lot of times so that you can retain these numbers in your head even uh, even if you tend to forget the 20 19 to 20 numbers uh, particularly particularly for the primary secondary tertiary or the GVAs or the per capita income etc etc but I would recommend you to memorize the FY21 estimates for all the uh, components that are mentioned here okay 
moving ahead which month is celebrated as upi safety and awareness month in india so guys here is the the right answer is february so npc a national payments corporation of india has announced this month as the uh, upi safety and awareness month also the upi safety and awareness week is celebrated in india from february 1st to february 7 okay can you guys tell me that in which month do we celebrate the financial literacy week financial awareness week by which is uh, anchored by rbi itself okay do tell me in the comment section below next question is which state ut celebrates the spitok gustar festival so guys here the right answer is ladakh it is basically a festival celebrated by the spitok monastery in ladakh itself and here the monks of the monastery wear the colorful mask and uh, uh, these these masks and the mask dance is called cham which is performed by the monks of this monastery Sput uh, spitok monastery in ladakh so guys the things that you need to mem uh, memorize from this news itself is this monastery the place of this monastery and the festival that this monastery celebrates that which is very easy to remember if you remember the monastery because it is named after the monastery as we can see here the major god is mahakal okay which is also known as gonbo in the local language of ladakh so mahakal is the protector deity who is the center of attraction of this festival moving ahead which of the following monasteries celebrate torgya festival so guys here the right answer is option d tawang monastery celebrates this torgya festival which is basically the new year festival of the buddhist community and it is celebrated by the monks of the tawang monastery in arunachal pradesh and the community that celebrates it uh, this festival is monpa community do remember this fact okay apart from this this is just for your information uh, purpose that this uh, Tor torgya festival or the new year of the buddhist comes around 10 to 12 january uh, whereas according to the gregorian calendar we celebrate the new year on 1st january but according to this uh, buddhist calendar it's around 10 to 12 january where this when this torgya festival is celebrated by the tawang monastery moving ahead who has won the uh, prestigious world games athlete, athlete of the year 2022 award so guys here th uh, the answer is pr shrijesh okay he has won this world games athlete of the year 2022 and by winning this award he has become the second indian to get this award first one was rani rampal the very first indian who has won the world games athlete of the year award was rani rampal who is the hockey team captain of the women's hockey okay now as far as this news is concerned do know this fact that international world games association gives this award and i have already told you the fact that he has become the second indian in 2020 rani rampal got this award and became the first indian in 2021 only basically last year only shrijesh was awarded with another accolade and that accolade was the goalkeeper of the year uh, in 2021 but so far we did not discuss that which sport is he related to so he is related to hockey and this can become a question guys for you in your examination often we tend to ignore the sports section but i have seen this trend that in rbi in nabad in uh, sebi uh, the examiner has have asked the questions from the sports sections so do not guys please do not ignore the sports section okay so the pr shrijesh belonged to the hockey sport so he was the goalkeeper in the sport okay apart from this the hockey india president is gyanendra ningom uh, ningombam and do remember his name as well because uh, again the trend is not only to stick to the news the examiner tends to ask questions that are away from the that are very distantly related to the main news so obviously here we are talking about a veteran player of hockey so uh, however obscure are the chances but you need to know that who is the president of hockey india at present so gyanendra ningombam is the hockey india president and the next edition of the world games okay will be held in 2025 in chengdu 
China. Although the Birmingham Games are also going to be held, the Commonwealth Birmingham Games in 2022. So along with them, the 2022 World Games will also be held. Who is the author of season one, the class of 2006 book? So guys, here answer is Akash Kansal and do remember here season one is mentioned so this is basically this book is uh, basically released in a season style manner like we have the seasons of the web series so in this manner this book will also have will also have another seasons coming up okay and this is for the first time in india that the book has been released according to the seasons next question is who has won the uh, last among equals power caste and politics in bihar villages book so here the right answer is m r sharan he has written this book so guys we have talked a lot about the questions now this is the time for gk factory i have taken up the gk factory section for today wherein i will be discussing about the aspirational districts so in the recent budget, I hope that you all have covered the budget. So in the recent budget, aspirational block program was announced. I hope you are aware about that. So what is this aspirational block program? So earlier we had the aspirational district program uh, and now the aspirational block program has been launched where the main focus will be to develop the blocks. Okay, so block is a smaller unit than uh, the districts. Okay, so earlier the focus was on districts. However, how can a district be, be developed if the blocks of the district are not developed? So obviously the focus in the aspirational district program was also on the block level, but Separately, aspirational block program has been launched in order to give a separate attention, a major focus to the blocks itself. So, 95% of the 112 aspirational districts have shown uh, good, have shown progress. Therefore, this uh, aspirational block program has been launched in order to permeate that success to the block level. Now let's discuss the transformation of aspirational districts program 2018. Now what are the districts? I don't think that I need to tell you this, right? So I'm not going into the uh, details of what are what is the district and what is the unit of governance, okay? This is something that is not at all important from the exam point of view. That's the part of your general awareness regarding the polity and the governance. So here, what are we going to discuss? So we are going to discuss about this program. Why was this program launched? What was the need of this program? What is the strategy of this program? Who is the person who is actually in charge of this program? Who is implementing this program? And how is it changing the scenario of the districts? Okay, these are some of the questions that we are going to answer here. So the very first thing, the launch year is 2018. The purpose is to change the socio-economic uh, ecosystem, the socio-economic picture of the districts. How many districts are there? 112 districts. Now guys, let me clarify, you may get uh, another number of districts also under this program because in 2018, a total number of 115 districts were there. Then this number reduced to 105 districts. Then districts badte hai, kam hote hai. That's the That's the basically a process. But right now, the total number of districts that have been chosen and uh, it has remained uh, at this number at 112 for a long period of time now. So at present, the aspirational districts number stands at 112. Okay, let me tell you the reason why the districts number uh, reduce and uh, are getting added. So the reason is the states. Okay, many states tend to add their districts, many states tend to withdraw from the scheme. For example, some uh, some months back I was reading that West Bengal has withdrawn from this aspirational district program. Although that was just the, I don't remember the news exactly, has West Bengal removed from the scheme or not? This is something that I don't know clearly, but this is the example that I am giving you. Okay, like this, many states withdraw from the uh, program altogether or many states tend to withdraw some of their districts from the program that's why the number tends to increase or decrease as per the addition or de uh, deletion of the uh, districts in the program as far as the number of districts are concerned right now so it is 112 do remember th this thing now why was the need to launch this aspirational district program the need was that it was seen that there is a lot of difference in the standard of living 
ऑफ पीपल अक्रॉस डिस्ट्रिक्ट अक्रॉस स्टेट तो डिफरेंस है ही ओके यू कैन नॉट कंपेयर द स्टेट ऑफ केरला विद बिहार द काइंड ऑफ डेवलपमेंट दैट इज देयर इन केरला विद द काइंड ऑफ डेवलपमेंट दैट इज देयर इन बिहार अक्रॉस स्टेट्स द डिफरेंस इज देयर एंड वी हैव एक्सेप्टेड इट बट विद इन द स्टेट्स द डिफरेंस इज देयर इन द डिस्ट्रिक्ट लेवल एज वेल सो इट वॉज देयर सो द सीड ऑफ दिस program germinated in the minds of the policy makers and they decided to launch this program to uh, bridge this gap among the districts okay next wo- reason was next need was that in the human development index also india's rank is really low so in order to give a push to india's rank in the human development index also uh, this a uh, program was launched so here my question for you all is tell me the rank of india in the latest human development index okay the scope of the program we have already discussed 112 under uh, underserved districts now how are the districts selected okay if we leave it on the states if we leave it on the districts or on the people itself to decide that whether your district is aspirational or not what do you think would be the outcome so in order to avoid the chaos what the government has done it has created a committee and all of this had happened in 2018 only before the launch of this program so do remember this thing so a committee of senior officials was established with the personnel from the state uh, cabinet as well okay so state officials were also there and they chose the districts now they did not randomly select uh, the district the district selection took place on the basis of four parameters and those four parameters are really interesting the four parameters are the social and economic caste based census then health uh, the kind of health ecosystem uh, that is there in the district then the kind of education that is there and the kind of infrastructure so the districts which lags behind on all these parameters uh, that needs much more attention than the districts that are performing really well therefore on the basis of this kind of uh, gap or this kind of performance the districts were selected into this scheme next in the line that we are going to discuss here is the strategy how is this program implemented so guys the strategy is 3c what are the three these three c's first is the convergence so we want to transform the scenario of districts but how are we going to do that first of all when we know this fact that there is a lot of hierarchy from the center to the district level and if we talk about the very smallest unit of uh, the uh, governance that is the panchayats so there is a lot of hierarchy so how can we implement that project how can we strategically improve the situation of the districts so for that three c's have been launched basically three uh, c's were and first first is the convergence so state level schemes and the center level schemes will be converged and basically convergence means does not mean integrate or mix both the schemes convergence means for example if there is a scheme for uh, for uh, removing the child marriage or for ab- abolishing the child marriage and on the center level we have beti bachao beti padhao scheme so whatever work whatever funding is there in this scheme and whatever the funding the state is allocated under its scheme to prohibit the child marriage both of these uh, schemes will be merged and the workers and the officials who were engaged in the beti bachao beti padhao scheme in one particular district they will also use the resources of this state's scheme in order to uh, get better results so that's how the convergence will take place next is collaboration okay so conversions at the level of scheme collaboration is at the level of officials central officials state official district officials they will collaborate and on the basis of this uh, the joint secretary and additional secretary level officials were appointed as the central prabhari officers of one district okay so every district has this central prabhari officer who was in charge of this aspirational district program next is the competition now whenever you will have any kind of competitive spirit in yourself that too in the positive light but competition is required for you to grow further therefore in order to uh, make the districts grow uh, by leaps and bounds uh, the the niti ayog has uh, and we searched this 
third pillar of its strategy okay this competition now how is it going to boost the competition among the districts by giving them ranking on the basis of their performance on certain parameters and this ranking guys is the monthly ranking okay so however jitna short hoga period ranking ka utna hi zyada pressure hoga districts pe and states pe to perform better okay so that's why the period is the monthly ranking next is the sectors of improvement obviously the sectors in which this aspirational district program seeks to improve the district are the sectors that have been chosen for the monthly rankings as well so monthly rankings are known as the delta rankings okay do remember this fact so there are 49 indicators across five thematic areas now the obviously you don't have to go into the indicators but do remember the total number of indicators that are there in the areas okay so first is health and nutrition education agriculture and water resources financial inclusion and skill development and basic infrastructure so across all these five parameters the districts will be improved okay now what is the focus of the government the focus is to serve the underserved districts sabka saath sabka vikas that's the motto okay now the what is the motto for the districts the districts should aspire to become the state's number one district okay and once they have achieved that aspiration then they should also aspire to become the nation's number one districts and with this spirit by endorsing this spirit among the districts this transformation this transformational program aims to transform the socio economic uh, picture of the districts of india okay moving ahead so at the planning stage who plans the basic uh, structure of this scheme or not the structure but the welfare actions that are that are to be taken under the program or basically the very grassroots level actions that need to be taken who plans all that so it is niti aayog which plans this entire structure of this program at the national level then the district districts are also asked to prepare their own plans okay so it's not from it's just not at the center that uh, it's not just the center who which is planning it's at the bottom level also the district level are also uh, given the autonomy to prepare the plans according to their strengths and according to their weaknesses which is a really good initiative because the districts which are at the very grassroots level they know better for themselves what what is their strength and what is their weakness next is the components so various programs have been launched like saksham bitiya abhiyan anemia mukt bharat surakshit hum surakshit tum so these are some of the programs that have been launched under the aspirational district program in order to change the socio economic dimensions of the districts block level so guys block level monitoring and block level improvement was already a part of the aspirational district program right now with the launch of the aspirational block program what the government has done the government has just given the uh, blocks and at most importance here and with the launch of the additional the aspirational block level program the blocks will also get an upper hand here and they will get another level of significance and thus their improvement will be fast paced okay so that is the basic idea behind uh, separating this entire portion all together into a new scheme so that is all regarding this now just this is just the last slide that i am showing you and here i would wind this up after this so here themes are mentioned their weights are mentioned guys this is important okay which theme is getting how much weight in the ranking is really important for you to know particularly in the light of the aspirational block block program that has been announced in the budget 2022 so health and nutrition 30% education 30% agriculture 20% weightage financial inclusion 5% weightage skill development 5% weightage but do remember both of these are clubbed into one theme therefore the total weightage is 10% basic infrastructure 10% now here data points are given so a total of 81 data points are there okay data points are basically the sub category of the indicators itself so 49 indicators are there 81 data points are there five thematic areas are there and these are the weightages given to each and every thematic area last but not the least the portal 
where the delta rankings are released so portal is also important the portal is named as champions of change dot government dot in do remember this as well on that note guys i would like to bid adieu to you guys uh, thank you so much for watching this video if you really liked the content then do not forget to subscribe the channel hit the bell notification thank you so much guys for watching this video